Hello everyone, Settlers Lament here. I'm joined today by my usual co-host Charlemagne, as well as John McAfee. And today we're going to be talking about the way that power operates in politics and the control that the establishment has over uh, the political sphere. So that's just the sort of general topic. The uh, question I have to start this out for you is that uh, today we're told that we live in a democracy. We're told that people are the rulers. But for many of us, it seems like we don't have any power whatsoever, either individually or collectively. It seems like power is really held by a small elite. Uh, do you agree with that assessment? And how do you think that happened? Uh, of course, I agree with that. I mean, that this is uh, one of the, uh, the more obvious uh, aspects of our current reality. How did it happen? Well, let, let's start at the very beginning. Uh, first of all, uh, why does power corrupt? Because this is the the real issue. Because it's corruption that causes the elite. So, why does corrupt? If you look at the human species, what are we? We're a mixed bag. I mean, we are loving and kind. We are compassionate and caring. We have dreams and hopes. Uh, at the same time, and, and sometimes simultaneously, uh, jealous and, and this greedy, uh, we're just a mixed bag, all of us. And if you think, uh, by the way, uh, that you, whoever you are listening, you don't fall in the category, then uh, you do not know something I can say will possibly be a benefit to you. So when you give this person, which is all of us, power, what part of us uses that power? Love? <laughs> uh, love. Uh, needs no power, people. It flows and flowers from the human heart. Grace? <laughs> well, grace is basically the absence of power. Uh, compassion? Generosity? Fuck no. None of these things need power. What needs greed? Uh, certainly needs power. Does it not? <laughs> if you have enough power, you can take everything. Uh, envy? That needs power, the envy, how do you get rid of envy? Well, you, you duplicate what they have, and that requires power. Anger certainly is, is one of the greatest users of power. So if you give any human being power, any human being, I don't care if it's Mother Teresa, uh, you corrupt human being. Uh, why? Uh, the old adage, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely this has to be so obvious to people, anyone who's looked at yourself, looked at the truth of, uh, you know, if you had power, that <laughs> power would not be used for good. Because the good part of you does not need it. No, it's the bad that takes it. If you want to call it good and bad, uh, 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 life supporting, non supporting, I don't give a fuck what words you use. So, of necessity, our leaders must be corrupt. I mean, if you don't see the logic in that, then that's fine. Uh, uh, smoke more weed and tune out. But so now you give people power, they turn corrupt. When corruption happens, well, suddenly uh, you've got a whole bunch of people with power and the vast majority with no. So what does power do? What well, power always does, it tries to coalesce, it tries to get more. Because once the bad part of you has tasted power, oh, it is hungry. We call that power hungry. Well, all people are power hungry. My God, if you think you're different, then you've not truly seen yourself, people. So the power hungry uh, immediately set about uh, doing two things. Uh, eradicating your competitors that have power and making alliances with those that can support you in eradicating it. If you don't see this in politics, then you haven't studied history. The alliances between kings that last how long? <laughs> well, only long enough for one to whack the other. Um, so this is human nature. This is what it is. However, it takes a long time when you give a person power, for that power to coalesce and be able to manifest in a corrupt fashion. 
is there a solution to this? Well, I mean, fuck me. The simplest one would be, uh, listen, every 20 years we force everybody to pack the goddamn bags and leave government. End of story. End of story. That would solve a lot of fucking problems, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, that's one thing. Who do we place him with? Who cares? Derelicts from the street could be you no know, worse. It'll take them 50 years to develop more power for themselves and understand how to use it against us. No, I, I think our system of government, uh, which began uh, 7,000 years ago, um, needs reevaluation. I, I think we now today understand human nature with psychology and testing and everything else well enough to see what the problem is. The problem is power itself. It's not the person who gives you who you put in there. If they already have power, they're going to get more. Um, you understand this problem began after we ended tribal societies. Because in tribal societies, well, here's something people don't know. Like in, I don't know, the Amazon, where they still have tribal societies, there are no laws. And if you murder someone, you murder someone. There's no law against it. It's just people are that, that motherfucker that could kill her. Stay the fuck away from him. There's no law against it anything in a tribal society. Why? Because there's no person, because nobody has power. Now you might go, oh, well, look at the Native Americans. They had chiefs. Of course they had chiefs. <laughs> but the chief didn't tell people what to do for fuck's sake. The chief just advised. That's all he did. That's all they could do. Why did they have chiefs? Why did they? They didn't elect them. It was a sort of a group consensus God damn, the chief died. Who's next? Well, God, it's, it's got to be sitting bull. I mean, who else can it be? Uh, it was obviously the wisest man or woman in the tribe. You wanted the wisest to lead you, not the powerful, not the most uh, warlike, even though some were, in fact, warlike and powerful. You wanted the one that when said, people, here's what I think you ought to do. The people goes, huh, well, okay, then, <laughs> let's do it. We lost that uh, as society and governments and nations grew. Anyway, I'm wondering. I, I talk about nonsense a lot. My apologies. Uh, what was the uh, no, I, I, I think that's really interesting. And I, I think that's an interesting solution, clearing out the government every 20 years. But I, I believe the problem goes a bit deeper than that, because the political class is certainly quite powerful. But be, behind that, there's the media and academia and the corporations and the banks and all those types of things. And they seem to have a massive amount of influence on the government. So I, I, I think the problem might be if we did do that, the result might just be that those same institutions would just be controlling whoever the new crop we get in every two, 20 years is. Oh, of course, of course. Of course, and that, listen, I, I, over, I oversimplify things, people. I mean, I, I don't have an hour to do a dissertation on what yeah, I yeah. think the real solution is. But I, I, I use the government as an example. To get, rid of, get rid of the fucking powerful. Take their power away. In any case, um, you're absolutely correct. It's a very complex web work of power, but it's all power. I think media doesn't have power. Then you haven't watched the coronavirus uh, uh, play out. So no, media, the banks, but see, this is power. It's just power manifests in a different economic power, financial power, power of uh, mind to control and influence. It may even be the case that the media has as much or more power than the American government itself at this point. Well, it's, I, don't, I don't know if there's any difference between the American government and the media, quite frankly. I mean, I could be wrong. I would agree with that. Yeah, it almost seems like it's one single party. Yeah, the problem is it's decentralized, so there is, is there's no clear way to clear all of it out without dismantling the entire society, which isn't really something that can feasibly be accomplished, uh, especially if you don't have power. Uh, you sort oh, of bullshit. Bullshit, my friend. Bullshit. Let me tell you something about the human and the human nature. Power reaches a point that it, oh, it topples itself. If you doubt this, again, look at history. No matter how powerful an empire became, what happened to it? It toppled from men. Why? Because power can only function 
And it only gets its source from those of us at the very bottom who on our shoulders are carrying of power. I mean, who, who builds the yachts, uh, the airplanes, who sisses their Rolls Royces, uh, who cleans their pools, who, please God, it's us. It's us. And when we shrug off of our backs, it collapses, always does, always has, always will. If you doubt this, let, let's look. Okay, the French Revolution is one of my finest examples of <laughs> how distant government can be, can distance itself from the people. So here we are. Uh, French people are starving. Uh, they go to the queen. Because he's going, why are my people rioting in the streets? And they go, well, <laughs> there is no bread, your majesty, to feed them. And she goes, ah, oh. mm -hmm. she thinks, she considers, she finally goes, aha, uh -huh. I will make a decree. Let them eat cake. <laughs> now, that's how insane governments can become. And if you think America is not approaching that, well then, <laughs> Just wait around a couple of years. Uh, the same, the, and what happened? It toppled because the people shrugged. What about the Russian Revolution? Now, at that point in time, Russia was the most powerful army on the fucking planet. Uh, and the Tsar, the most powerful single human being. And yet, he distanced himself so far. His power was the veil between him and the people that the most powerful army on the face of the planet at that time was toppled by people with pitchforks, torches, and shovels. So no, don't, don't tell me that nothing can be done because history tells us that something is always done. It's just that I pray it doesn't come to that. And, and we have facilities and tools. Now, we have, listen, we have uh, weapons uh, in the hands of the people called engineering, technology, mathematics. Um, we have cryptocurrencies, for fuck's sake, which are certain to replace fiat currencies. Um, we have a wealth of tools that we never had before. It's no longer pitchforks and shovels. It's the internet. Uh, it's a private chat. It's the ability to, to me sit here in an undisclosed location uh, and talk to the two of you while dozens or hundreds or however many might listen, please, God, no, we have power. Do not think we don't. Collectively, with the intelligence that we have, with the experience, with the talents, um, no, we can stop this. Why isn't it stopped? Because we are fucking lazy and willing to do what others tell us if we don't have to think for ourselves. Just leave me alone and get me back to my video game. Or just leave me alone and let me do my drugs. Or just leave me alone and let me, let me, let me, let me. Well, fuck me, people. You have to let yourself. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm in hiding. I don't know if you, you guys know my story. Everyone does. Or don't they? It's for the past year. No? Yes? Yeah, we're fuck familiar it with it, I think. Oh, yeah. I didn't, okay, good. So, I think yeah, the so, audience might not be, so. Oh, okay. Well, then, okay. So now, so uh, listen. I, I've I've always been in trouble with governments, especially corrupt ones, and they all are. And so I've been I've been run out of more countries than I can count. I've now been run out of America. Um, but start. Okay. So first of all, I have not paid taxes for eleven years. I refuse to. I never will ever again pay taxes. Uh, and so uh, for nine of those years. The government didn't give me shit. They left me alone. Why? I've already paid $50 million in taxes. I have not received $50 million in services. And they knew full well if they forced the issue. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a very loudmouth motherfucker. Best to leave McAfee alone. However, two years ago, I started speaking on the international stages. Hey, people, you don't want to pay taxes either? Here's how to do it. Privacy coins and distributed exchanges, and you will never have to pay another dime. Well, at that point, uh, things got a little, well, tense between myself and America and a few other governments as well. In any case, then, 
January of last year, the IRS uh, convened a grand jury to charge Janice and I with tax fraud, even though uh, I haven't filed taxes, let alone fraud is lying on your tax return. <laughs> I haven't even filed a return, cannot have committed fraud. And by the way, people, it's not illegal not to file. I mean, yeah, the other, the IRS can come and take your house, your car, your kids, uh, and everything you own, except for, I think, a pair of shoes, pair of pants, and a shirt. Um, but they didn't do that. In any case, uh, I wasn't going to let myself be railroaded. So I took Janice, myself, myself, our entire staff, and four large dogs. I went to Miami, took our yacht uh, to the Bahamas. Well, and why the Bahamas? Because the Bahamas has no taxes, never has had taxes. A uh, very thriving country, by the way. Um, and uh, you cannot be extradited for a crime that's not in the crime, not a crime in the country you're in. But the reason for that is that, I mean, otherwise, I mean, uh, Saudi women who escape that system of oppression and come to America, uh, we could act, we could send them back because it's it's illegal in Saudi Arabia not to wear a fucking veil if you're a woman. Well, it's not a crime in America, and therefore, uh, that's why they come to America. In any case, um, so I went to the Bahamas, but. I knew that they would come for me illegally, which they did. But I'm still John fucking McAfee. I, I still am one of the, I don't know, one of the security experts in this world. And listen, if some shit's coming down, I'm going to find out about it beforehand. We escaped six hours before the uh, CIA goons arrived, went to Cuba. We were there for two months. The, the Cuban government called Janice and I in. Um, and said, uh, listen, the, the U.S. has unofficially, because there's no official channel, demanded that we return you to America. Um, in my heart sank. However, they said, however, Mr. McAfee, we are disinclined to do that. But you do realize now that you are a serious problem for us, uh, and we're giving you 72 hours to get out of our country and never come back, <laughs> which we did. Uh, we were four days at sea, went to the Dominican Republic, and we were arrested before we could even get off the fucking boat. Uh, the internal security forces, hundreds of soldiers came, arrested us. Um, and, and they basically said, uh, you have to go back to America. Uh, <laughs> of course, uh, every country in the world is going to say that if they're in the so. Anyway, um, so, but but fortunately, I've I got two lawyers, and after four days of wrangling, where Janice and I were in a jail. By the way, I cannot recommend Dominican Republic jails. Um, I've been in jail uh, well, uh, twenty-one times in eleven countries, but literally, the Dominican Republic. If you want a jail experience, I, I'd start somewhere else. In any case, so um, we we finally got out. Uh, they asked where I wanted to go. I said I want to go to England. So they kept our boat. Um, we went to England and once we got to England, we went underground, uh, and that was in July of last year. Now, no one knows where we are and no one will ever find out. And so I'm still doing what I've always done. I'm working with my people through, <laughs> through the internet, uh, building privacy coins, uh, distributed exchange. Now, uh, the privacy phone, the first true privacy phone that's coming out, uh, in September, um, and this is America, people. America has influence everywhere, especially the Caribbean. It's just part of America. And so when the CIA comes and says, we want him, send him back. Well, fuck me. <laughs> uh, it's a problem. So anyway, so how'd we get on that? Oh, yes. Yeah, so so why is uh, why am I so adamant uh, about America being a corrupt uh, government? Because in my experience, personal experience, um, my experience with it and what they are trying to do with me is not exactly <laughs> uh, open and above board. Hmm. I actually agree with you that um, the current system is inevitably going to collapse and is really laying the foundations for that to happen. But um, the question I have that I was alluding to earlier is is what's going to happen to that power after it falls? Um, we were actually talking on the show earlier this week about the difficulty of, of rousing people to, as you say, shrug off um, the condition of slavery that they're basically into this thing. And it's, it's exceptionally difficult in modern times to, to get people to take action and not, you know, simply uh, lounge about enjoying their 
you know, drugs or pornography or movies or, or whatnot. Well, okay. Uh, let's assume, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but let's assume that coronavirus was simply a test. I wonder what will happen if we just tell everybody to lock themselves in their fucking homes for two months. And then they did it. We did it. Then they go, ooh, well, that's interesting. Um, why don't we start our takeover soon? No, really, do, do you understand? Now, yes, uh, we, I, we're very concerned. I was, I was a teenager growing up in the late 1950s. I mean, I was 15 years old in 1960. I mean, if the government, the U.S. had said something like that, do you know what would have happened? We would have stormed every fucking city hall in America. Literally. With a fuck you. Get the fuck out. We're putting somebody else in this office. Do you understand? This is what the attitude of Americans was back then. <laughs> not one person, not one person would have locked themselves in their house. That's all, all it would have required is someone to, wait a minute, you know, the Constitution says you can't do that shit. Doesn't matter about emergency powers. Fuck that. No. But today, everybody, well, not everybody. I mean, there are a few exceptions, and they made the news, and they ended up in jail. Like that poor woman that had a hair salon in, in Los Angeles and said, I'm not doing it. $7,000 fine, and she's in jail. So now, but no, when I grew up, that shit was not going to be taken. Fuck no. Why? We were a free country in 1950. Yes, um, I think we're all also very concerned that they're they're really trying to roll in a totalitarian state at this point. And, you know, even despite myself being willing to go outside and do whatever I want and not be forced to be locked inside, if they're arresting all the business owners for remaining open, well, there's nothing to do or go to outside, especially if no one else is there with you. It's, it's been very disappointing to see that people are just willing to accept this condition of imprisonment and not actually just wake up and recognize that, uh, you know, they should just be able to go out and do whatever they want. And if you want to take your own, you know, health precautions, that's fine. But, you know, the government really shouldn't be able to just tell you to stay inside and then you just do it without any resistance whatsoever. What do you think, Settler? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it seems like we um, we've developed a very serious slave spirit, um, uh, a, a, as John said. Uh, just like fifty years ago, there's no way people would have uh, would have went went for this. Um, but the government tells us to do something, or the media tells us to do something, and we just do it. Yes. Yeah, it's like that you started you started the the question with you know it. It's possible that, that uh, we're headed toward a totalitarian state. I mean, do you understand that by the definition of totalitarian is where an authority can violate whatever written laws you have by simply creating new ones. It's an emergency, therefore. Um, and Congress has a fucking session and changes laws like crazy overnight. Uh, that, that's called totalitarianism, people. You're living in a fucking totalitarian state now. It's just going to get worse, people. Now, you have the illusion of democracy. Do you really have democracy? Do you have a choice? What if you'd like to vote for your neighbor? You can't. Not going to help. The two parties that control the entire U.S. government decide. Uh, you're going to vote for either him or her. Fuck you otherwise. Do you understand that that's not democracy? <laughs> I'm sorry. It just isn't. And here's the, here, you think the going inside is insane. Here's where it started. People in America, literally, literally, I know it sounds unbelievable, but they do it. We'll, we'll vote for a man or a woman who has spent millions of dollars to get a job paying 300000 Now, when I was growing up, they taught me how to count. Um, <laughs> and... Um, uh, if, if that had happened in the 50s, what do you, can you fucking imagine? And people go, are you insane? What is wrong with you? We're not putting you in office if you're that stupid. No, it's not stupidity, people. If you're that greedy, if you're that corrupt, if you're that hungry for power that you're going to spend sometimes 10, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars to get a job paying 300000 something is wrong with you if you fucking vote for them. What the goddamn hell is wrong with you, America? You are the problem, people who vote. 
Christ, what idiot does that shit? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's all right. We're, no worries. Uh, we're, no, we're no fans of the democratic system our, ourselves in America. And, um, you know, I think our, our view on it is it, it's Does basically it a mechanism to, um, you know, divert public attention away from any real action. You know, you just have this yes. illusion that you're doing something, but you're not doing anything. Yeah, but, but seriously, if you understand the system, do you understand you're in a system where whoever you're voting for has spent hundreds of millions to get the job? Well, then there's something wrong with that system, people. Please, God. And then others say, oh, no, well, they didn't do it. Somebody else said, I don't give a shit who did it. Somebody did. <laughs> it's worth money to somebody. Do you not understand how insane you are, people, for actually, number one, believing it, and number two, cooperating with it? What would happen to America if every fucking voter stayed home? Every fucking voter, except those in political parties. Now, you tell me that the government would not topple. You know it would. I know it would. Everybody knows it would. So you ask, what can we do? Stay the fuck away from voting booths. That's number one. Because by cooperating with the system, you're simply supporting it. Do you not understand? If you see the insanity of someone spending a hundred million dollars, <laughs> because, because listen, here's the truth of it. George Washington, he may not be this popular to these days because of his racial attitudes, but let's give him some credit for other things. Uh, he didn't want the presidency. God damn it. He was a general of the Continental Army, slipped in fucking ditches, had frostbite, <laughs> and lost his goddamn teeth. Fuck me. He just wanted the fish on the Potomac River. But Ben Franklin took him aside and said, George, who else is there? Can't be me, not Ben Franklin. I just drink and chase women. Uh, John Hancock, well, fuck me, all he can do is sign his name. Uh, what about Thomas Jefferson? He can't find his fucking glasses. No, George, who else is there? So he shamed that man into being president. The last real president we ever had, Dwight Eisenhower, other than Kennedy, uh, who was shot for attempting to be a real president, Dwight Eisenhower, God damn it, he was the general <laughs> of the Allied powers, the most powerful man in the fucking world at the time. He just wanted to retire. He's an old man. Fuck me, people. I've done my goddamn duty. Let me go home. But who else was there? America was in tight straits. Fuck me. After the war, we'd spent everything. She was being rationed for goddamn sakes. So he reluctantly took the fucking job. And when he left, he warned all of us people's people, heed my warning. If you do not take action, you will lose every freedom that was given to you by the Constitution because of the CIA and the military-industrial complex. And, and that's what happened. <laughs> we paid no heed. So no, if that's not the person running, the guy they have to drag kicking and screaming to be president, then it's the wrong man or the wrong woman. I'm sorry, but, but this is just the truth. And if you vote for either of these pricks, I don't give a shit who it is. If Jesus Christ comes down from heaven and decides he's a Republican or a Democrat, and <laughs> he has to pay $100 million, I wouldn't vote for him, people. I'm serious. And you know this is true. Please, God, listen to me. Children, I want to reach through this monitor and grab you all by the neck and shake you till you wake the fuck up. You're cooperating with the most evil entity that has ever existed on this planet. And if you do not see this, why don't you look at the truth of a president who can sit in his office on a Monday morning and read a list of names and decide who's going to die in the Middle East or Africa or where the fuck ever. Please, please heed my words. And I'm sorry to be serious with you, but sometimes it's necessary. Uh, no, no worries. I, I think it's really interesting. 
Yeah, and uh, abstinence from democracy. I mean, this is an idea that's, um, you know, has been written about by a few bloggers that we're fans of since the uh, late 2000s, at least. And uh, other people in our circle sort of suggest this as a way of dismantling the system. And I think it would really work um, if people disconnected from the government en masse and, and just sort of uh, stopped playing this game. Uh, I guess it's a sort of a, a, pa- it's a pacifist approach. Yes. Well, it's not even a pacifist. I think it's a very activist approach. Mm-hmm. Not doing is as active as doing. Because all of it, we don't need pitchforks. We don't need lit torches and, and scythes and uh, swords. No, fuck me, people. We just need to abandon it. Do you understand? If you're living in a house that's on fire, just move the fuck out. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. And we have time for one more question, my apologies. No problem. Uh, what are you ahead, Settler? Um, I, I, we've actually gone through all my questions. Do you have anything else, Charlemagne? Um, let's see. So, I guess I can, uh, <laughs> I can ask an interesting, uh, let's see. In terms of, um... I, I'm not gonna, I, I don't know if Janice told you, I'm not gonna talk about the allegations that I ate all those children, okay? I was drunk at the time, I remember the thing, so I couldn't help you. Anything else is okay. Well, I'm, I'm curious what you think about, um, I guess, the economic system we call capitalism that currently exists. And, um, you know, whether whether or not uh, capitalism as a, as a process is, is something that needs to be addressed and whether or not it's, uh, you know, whether or not human beings really control it at this point, uh, it could you could really call it a sort of a runaway process that that sort of inevitably leads somewhere, you know, potentially to some sort of singularity, as people like to put it, outside of human control. So do you think we've really created something that um, is outside of human beings' power to control at this point, realistically? Well, I mean, I think everything in life is outside of human control. I'm sorry to to put it that way, but from my 74-year perspective, um, yes, and in terms of capitalism, it's certainly outside of any one person's control. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what are the alternatives? I mean, listen, we've, we have proffered up a whole bunch since Karl Marx predicted the collapse of capitalism. Um, and I think capitalism is very rapidly becoming communism in America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but we've tried communism, socialism. Socialism is happening in Europe now, and it uh, doesn't seem to be making anybody happy. Um, I, I don't. I just don't know the answer to economic problems. I mean, number one, uh, you're asking a non-economist. Uh, number two, you're asking someone who has made fortunes and lost. <laughs> fortunes. Um, probably unfair <laughs> to even ask me. <laughs> Um, because capitalism allowed me to have uh, a lifestyle that um, many, unfortunately, uh, have not experienced. Um, but I, I just don't know. I don't know. I, I, am, I am concerned that finance, that money itself, has become so linked with uh, this dream called happiness, mm. a complete a completeness, um, the uh, the dream of fulfillment. Um, because having had hundreds of millions of dollars and yachts and airplanes and more estates than I could ever live in, I actually I built. A ten million dollar estate in Hawaii that I never even went to. It took so long to build the fucker. Uh, built a a mansion on South Padre Island, Texas. It took three years. I spent two weeks there. That's all. Um, none of that shit made me happy. I'll tell you now. Um, in fact, if you think you own something, well, that's <laughs> that's the fundamental. A problem with human perception because you can't own anything. Uh, least of all, the most valuable of all things, real estate, the land. Uh, and this is why the Native Americans thought we were totally insane, which we really are. 
that you can own the land. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's been there for millions of years and will be there millions of years after you're gone. No, you don't own it. It owns you. And even things like a house. I mean, <laughs> you know, every fucking day I had uh, a property manager somewhere going, I, good God, we had a total freeze last night. Five of the bathrooms are flooded. Uh, no, the fucking house owned me. I didn't call the house and tell it to fix itself. It called me and says, ah, come fix me. Boats? Oh, my fucking God. There are holes in the water into which you throw money. No, no. Shit does not make you happy. Money does not make you happy. It makes you uh, occupied. Do you understand? Like a, a video game. You're into it, and you can buy whatever you want, and therefore you do. It's usually that's what fucking happens. I'd, I'd see something in a the Rob Report magazine. I want that. Uh, you know, call my uh, my yacht broker and say buy that for me. Uh, or seriously, because it was something to fucking do. Did it bring me happiness? Fuck no. Fuck no. I've had five wives. I've had more shit than you could ever dream of. And the one thing that I really wanted, which was contentment, I've only received uh, after I lost everything. Well, almost everything. Um, I am on the run. I'm wanted by six nations. I'm in hiding with my wife um i am limited in where i can go and what i can do i can't own a telephone because i would be discovered instantly by the cia or some covert agency and yet today i am the happiest i have ever fucking been people because i am free of that desire for more because here's the problem with money. <laughs> I, I don't care if you have a billion dollars, you want more. Ten billion, you want more. Look around you if you don't think this is true. A Bill Gates, which is man in the fucking world, wants more. Donald Trump, who has power, wants more. Power and money are gods to many people and are worshipped as gods. But, but they are... <laughs> They are as false as gods can be, people. And they don't bring you anything that you think they will, that you hope they will. And, and I know many, many rich and powerful people who are the most miserly, miserable motherfuckers when it comes to their own lives, their own loves, their compassion. So no, no, I, the problem isn't capitalism or communism. The problem is the, the worship of greed and the worship of money. And unfortunately, I have to leave you. I have another interview right now. And I've really enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, Th thank you very asking. much. for Very good. Us. Thank you. It was a great interview. All right. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Please donate to my subscribe star or Patreon if you enjoy this content. And also, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. And please share this content with anyone you think might find it interesting. And a special thanks to my donors, Emmett Vestry, Seth Apex, Charismatic Byzantine, The Right Cafe, and Quo Pregranator. Thanks everyone again, and goodbye.